in terms of his constituency feeling more like a fan base or a cult as opposed to people who are willing to hold this political person, this public servant accountable for his job and hold him accountable for the, you know, the money that he makes based on the tax dollars that we pay. He had a town hall and uh, one of the questions came from a woman who apparently thought she was talking to Edward from Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> like me, it, it, it felt like I mean, and that's what. I, and listen, across the aisle, I feel that way about Kamala. I feel that way about Biden. I felt that way about Obama, Clinton. I've always felt that way. These are public servants. We are not your fans. You work for us. We pay you with our tax dollars. We are supposed to hold you accountable, right or wrong. We're supposed to point out what you're not doing wrong. We're supposed to, I mean, hold hold the light up and say, this is what you're supposed to be doing. But she wanted to ask him a question and she reacted like this. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. President. Thank you, Thank you very much. I have to say, you have a great smile. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank As, you. So, <laughs> he does. You're so handsome when you smile. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> you know, <laughs> honestly, they said that this changed with Kennedy because that was the first televised. I think that was the first televised debates, Kennedy versus Nixon. And, you know, Kennedy, it was like, back, remember, this was such a different time. It was a huge thing when JFK showed up without a hat, right? They were like, oh, my God, the man's not wearing a hat. Democrats are held to a different standard. He didn't wear a hat. Obama wore a tan suit, That's both right. of them, horrible, horrible people, right? <laughs> so little different standard. Republican, 20,000 lies. Democrat, you didn't wear a hat. Yeah. But they said your look on TV does make a difference, right, wrong, or indifferent. It does. It's part of it, right? It's part of the image. Part of it is you want somebody who looks healthy who looks reasonable. I mean, that that's one thing about Trump. He just doesn't look like a healthy person. Whereas like Barack Obama, you know, he looked great, but you could also see the job, right? Because remember, they show any president going into the White House and coming out of the White House and they age at three times normal, you know? Um, so it, it, for this cult member, oh, you have a pretty smile. Why the hell not? Here's another thing, maybe, Maybe she doesn't support Trump, but she's from that world where her mother said, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything. And she was just like, what can I say? What can, let's see, policy's terrible, ignorant, he lies, he's a racist, misogynist. The smile, I'll credit his dentist. Maybe that was it. <laughs> I, I would believe you if she wasn't. She, she couldn't compose herself. And you know what's funny? I thought about this was a big moment for him because he had to hear for eight years how handsome Barack Obama was. And you know that he has a he has an obsession with Barack Obama. President Obama just hit a nerve for him. And so that's why he worked so hard to undo everything that uh, President Obama did. But to finally hear out loud and in public, the next thing he needs to hear is somebody to tell him that he's smart and he is going to explode on camera because I'm sure he never hears that he's handsome or uh, that he smiles. So I, I thought that was a big moment for him because finally somebody said that he was handsome when he smiled, which I beg to differ. <laughs> I think. Well, you know, power is attractive. Um, I had a friend... I keep saying had. I got, well, I haven't talked to this person in a long time. Back when I used to do USO military shows, uh, they were high up in the USO. So they used to go to a lot of these powerful political fundraisers and events in Washington, D.C. And they said one time, they said, look, politicians are just ugly movie stars. Yes. Um, <laughs> there is an attraction to power that you can't deny it. Uh, powerful, particularly with powerful men, a lot of women find attractive just because they're powerful. It's not their physical appearance. And if they have the physical appearance, that's a bonus. But, um, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, let's listen, I'll even go back to Bill Clinton 
in the office, and God bless him, he did a great job. He balanced the budget. But uh, do you think 20 something year old women are falling for Bill Clinton if he's managing a Home Depot? Mm, probably not. <laughs> I will say this. Uh, first of all, Donald Trump's makeup looks like it's being administered by a mortician, not a makeup artist. <laughs> <laughs> the, the blotches and the, the discoloration, it's like they're But that's the sweat. That's flop sweat. Like, you you know, you do the makeup. I mean, you know this, right? You're on camera. When When they do your makeup and then the lights hit you and it gets hot, you start sweating. So the makeup artist has to do touch-ups. Well, imagine if you sweat like that all the time just because you're in horrible condition and you live on Big Macs and, you know, fried chicken. And isn't it interesting that a racist loves Kentucky fried chicken? Shouldn't <laughs> we be able to keep that to ourselves? But anyway. <laughs> it's so funny. I, um, you know, I when I think about, um, you're right, about the the you know, the Bill Clinton effect and the, the Donald Trump effect. The funny thing is people get very upset with me when I say this. Donald Trump is an elitist. I know people who know him. He wouldn't throw, he wouldn't spit on that woman if she was on fire. You look at the, the his track record of the women that he's courted and he has been involved with. He, you know what I mean? Like you look at them and you're like, he would never, ever, ever, you know, they said he wouldn't let somebody get in the elevator with him because they were nobody. So I just think it's interesting to see these people, you know, just there. There's this romant romanticizing about Donald Trump makes me feel so sad for them because that they, they usually live in the worst conditions and their lives get worse as a result of his elitism and and his practices. But they love him undeniably because he's the Dukes of Hazard to them, not the leader of the free world. Well, um, the um, just really quick, the elitist thing, and again, this is where the Republican Party, they, they're good at their branding and they stay on message, right? So they always talk about the liberal elites. Right. And then they go home to their mansions, to their vacation homes. They get on their private jet. They get in a yacht. I mean, do you think Republican senators are not rich? Do you think they're not, you know, elitist and living an above average lifestyle? Of course they are, you know, but... But they say the Democrats are, and and the reason it works is they all say it all the time. They right. all so yeah, Donald Trump. It's, it's an elitist, and he was born into it. That's the other thing. He hasn't, you know, he's a great businessman. Like no, he's not. No, he's not. He he has learned to use bankruptcy to cover his mistakes. His father's money has bailed him out numerous times. He, you, if if an average person came to you and had had bankrupted three casinos. That's the amazing one. To bankrupt a casino, to bankrupt a place, people go to casinos and what do they say? Oh, I brought a hundred bucks I can afford to lose. I brought 500 bucks I could lose this weekend. Imagine having a business people walk in and say, I can lose money here. And you're like, I don't know how to turn a profit on this. How am I <laughs> gonna make this work? And that's what you call a brilliant businessman? No. Well, uh, moving on to the next story, because uh, <laughs> listen, three bankrupt. There's nothing to say after you say he bankrupted three casinos. I, I know three people who have serious gambling problems. <laughs> <laughs> How you managed to bankrupt a casino, let alone three, just speaks volumes to your business practices. You, you gotta have a certain set of skills to bankrupt a casino.